fashion insider friends. What is up? This is the Fashion Crimes Podcast, where I cover all things fashion, style, shopping, style inspiration, and interview incredible small business owners who are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes, I'm the best friend you never knew you needed and the poster child for fashion over 40. And I mean, way after 40. Say it with me, fashion and style are your friends, not your enemies. I'm Holly Cates, your favorite personal stylist, and let's keep it real, the only Holly you need to know. Turn it up, because I got a lot to say, and I am super stoked you're here. As we have come off of the first week of summer, let me say congratulations to those who have made it through the Memorial Day holiday. And if your kids are at home, yeah, I'm sorry about that. And if they aren't at home, yay! Oops, did I say that out loud? Look, there are people in this world who are born to be mothers, and I am in awe at what it takes to do it and do it well. I myself, I'm in the stepmom's club. Stepmom's club, I'm raising the roof right now. You just can't see me. And that's hard enough. I love my stepson, Zach, as I gave birth to him myself. So I get it. Step parenting is so great. Let's be honest. At least in my case, it was because I never had to have babies. My choice, could I have? I mean, probably, but I chose not to. And look, I got one anyway. So there you go. And I didn't even have to get pregnant. Someone else did it for me. Ha! Look, a win is a win, honey. A win is a win. And when I met him, he was 12 and he was wearing basketball shorts and slides. I am proud to say I have created a shopping monster. I mean, like it is bad. He loves clothes and considers himself a sneakerhead. He's 25 now, and I am so not young. Anywho, I really didn't anticipate how much he really would take to fashion and style, and he does a great job. Super proud. If your kids are lacking in the fashion department, that's a whole other podcast episode. And don't worry, I have solutions to those issues too. I'm just full of useless information. Moving right along, I totally need you to feel sorry for me because my husband made me cancel our dog's birthday party because I was coughing like a seal. I know it's not chic, but I was so pissed and really sad. I had gotten a new dress and everything. The invitation was super cute. It said, come for burgers and licks. Schmutz is turning six. All dogs welcome, people considered. I love that. My dog is named Schmutz, by the way in case we have some new fashion besties here who are tuning in for the first time. I was super pouty, and then we had a few people over to soften the blow later in the weekend when I was coughing once an hour instead of 30 times an hour. And I still got to sport my Norma Kamali bathing suit and fabulous cover-up by Le Pristique Wistan, which I love. More on that brand later. Did you listen to my top bathing suit picks episode? That was episode 144, so please go back and listen to that if you missed it. And how did you like the episode on my top pick for the best summer dresses of 2023? That was two weeks ago, episode 146. I know there's billions of dresses in the world, but the ones I picked happened to be the ones that I thought stood out to me. I hope you found some that you liked and can send me pics of what you're thinking, and maybe I can help you pick one. Who knows? Remember, buying straight off the rack is not the goal. If you're harder to fit, then you just have to look a little harder and a little longer. It's worth it to look beyond what is easy and go for quality over quantity. You know, I got to boss somebody around. So whoever's up for it, let me know if you need help picking a dress. And if you're stuck figuring out what to wear to a summer wedding, make sure you go back and listen to both of my episodes on how to be the best dressed wedding guest episodes 84 and 92. When you pull up those episodes, you can follow along with the coordinating Pinterest boards as well to give you some examples. Going to a wedding in the summer can be beautiful but sweaty. So if you're having issues with that, please let me know and I'll be sure to address that and give you a shout out as well. I don't know how your day can get any better. How did you like meeting Marissa Wilson? That was last week's episode, which is episode 147. Isn't she fab? Make sure to check her out as well, as we love supporting women entrepreneurs that are changing the fashion industry for the better. Yes. And make sure you go to our YouTube channel, please, 
go to our YouTube channel, Fashion Crimes Podcast, and you can see the video. Shout outs this week. I want to give out a shout out to Janet and Martha, who have asked me the same question about nail color. Nail color is irrelevant, okay? It's the nail length that's really the issue. Super long nails in a professional environment, it just isn't that professional. Now, if you're in a creative industry, this really doesn't apply to you and is the same category as tattoos, face piercings, extreme hair color, all that. You can't find anyone in an office these days without some sort of like tattoo or piercing or what have you. Most companies, they have really backed down on this. It used to be like super taboo. Now, a lot of companies are more accepting of it. As long as it's not on like your face and your neck, if it shows a little bit like on your arms, then it's fine. So for your nail color, it's really your choice. It's not a big issue. And you're certainly not chastised for wearing a funky color these days, like a blue or, or whatever, unless your company has very strict rules about this. So go ham, is what I say. I really love nail art and I used to do it all the time, but now I really just get a manicure with no color. And I know that sounds boring, but I don't want to keep up with it. I get a manicure, no color. I get a pedicure, of course, but if I'm going to an event, I do get color. But if I'm just kicking around, I like to give my nails a break. Next, Martha asked me about the Apple Watch. Loving this. Here's my opinion and don't get mad at me. It is too casual to wear when you're dressed nice and a super big pet peeve of mine when people wear it when having their professional pictures taken. No, stop. Please don't send me a Christmas card and your ass is wearing your fucking Apple Watch. No, this upsets me and you're not tracking your steps when you get your picture taken. You're just not. If you want to wear a watch, get a nice watch that's like a piece of jewelry. You can wear your Apple Watch on the weekends or vacation or when you're exercising, Avi, or whatever. You're going to go eat tacos in a basket, go wear your Apple Watch. You're going to a nice restaurant, girl, no. Then, still on Martha, she's asking me about hosiery. So let's be honest, hosiery is back for the younger generation because everything from the 90s is back in. And I we've talked about that before. It is really not for our age group because... We don't really need it. You can wear opaque tights, pattern tights, fishnets all day long. Those are ageless for anybody. You should never wear pantyhose. I mean, if you want to, you certainly can. It's just not necessary. And yes, you only wear tights when it's cold. Don't be wearing tights when it's 90 degrees outside. If your company or your professional environment requires pantyhose, you're in the wrong profession. It's just my opinion. And again, our friend at Vian Milano makes Italian thigh-high stockings. And if you want to have like lingerie, go for thigh-high stockings if that's your jam, okay? I want to give a shout out to Kira. She wrote in, she picked a dress and was asking me about accessories, what to wear with it. So I helped her. Shout out to Stacy. She was asking me about sandals. Shout out to Kim. She was telling me about a brand that she loves. Shout out to Jennifer and to Cheryl and to Christine and Judy this week, all for writing in as well. Excellent, excellent job, fashion besties. So speaking of fashion besties, our fashion bestie, Madison Ann, shout out to Maddie. She wrote in and she was asking my opinion about the best loungewear and pajamas these days. I thought this is something I've never covered before. So let's do it. Great request, Maddie. So thank you for that and for writing in. I could myself use a little upgrade in the pajama department. And once I started thinking about it, it seemed like it's something that I really don't make time to address in my wardrobe, which brings me to my first point. This is part of your wardrobe. Now, I know it doesn't make sense to think of it that way, but it really is. Think about it. Look, you get up, put on clothes, maybe change again if necessary during the day, and then you change again for bed. So yes, It is totally part of your wardrobe, and we need to give it the attention it deserves. Instead of ignoring it and wearing some beat-down, hand-me-down t-shirts from God knows where, which is a fashion crime, I can't confirm or deny I'm guilty of this, but let's just say the first step is awareness. For those of you who are saying, 
It doesn't matter. I'm not going to waste perfectly good t-shirts. No one sees me. I don't sleep with anything on anyway. My husband doesn't care. I will never get rid of my most comfortable pajamas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. For all of you out there saying this, I hear you. I hear you. This is where I explain the distinct difference between loungewear, pajamas, and all things that have been demoted down to what I like to call the house section of your wardrobe. This is the formula that I've come up with, and it makes sense. So you can categorize these specific items so they all have a useful purpose. Let's start at the top. And P.S. robes are included in this too. We'll get to that in just a minute. When purchasing, wearing, or categorizing loungewear, these are clothes that you are wearing around the house, lounging in, however, are not embarrassed to be seen in in public. For example, cute stretch pants, leggings, tops, and sweatshirts, and jackets and tanks that are in style, free from rips, tears, or stains that you could actually run out and run a few errands in. Could this be part of your workout wardrobe? The answer is yes, perhaps, but not always. I know, I'm sorry, that sounds a little confusing, but don't worry. Just head on over to my Pinterest board for some examples of what loungewear truly is. Now, please notice I did not say cute pajama sets. In my opinion, which is what this podcast is really about, my opinion, let's be honest, pajama sets are not. I repeat, are not loungewear. Can you lounge in them? Of course. Can you run out of the house in them in a hurry? The answer is no. You know why? Because they're pajamas. It's in the title. No, you cannot run out and run errands in something that you sleep in. This is a fashion crime. (coughs) Pajamas are something you sleep in. I said that already, just repeating it in case no one heard me. That's literally the definition of pajamas, something you wear to bed, not out of the bedroom. Now, I know some of y'all trying to get cute, and if you're in a hurry, you might wear some pajama pants out real quick if you're in a crunch. We all have been there, myself included. Also, look, I want y'all to know I'm not just sitting up here preaching. I am right here right now calling myself out, like seriously serious. I have been guilty of all these things. I am the first to admit it because I'm a terrible liar. Let's be honest. Some great ideas for loungewear are as follows. And y'all go to my Pinterest board and look too, okay? Kia Tomlin, that's going to be episode 125 for her exclusive interview with yours truly. Deo Women with Yolanda White, she's episode 134. And Parodies with Allison Darawi, she is episode 26. Carbon 38, they are an active wear site, but they have loungewear too, and they should pay me. I have sent so many people there. Aloe Yoga, great stuff. Cotton Citizen and Panjaya. I think I'm saying it right. Panjaya, Pangea, Panjaya. In the pajama and robe department, here's where the fashion crime can creep up without you realizing it. And it has happened to me. That's why we're discussing it today. I was buying pajamas on the cheap from big box stores, wearing old beat down pajamas, old sports t-shirts from my kid or from my husband that were still in good condition that I felt bad for getting rid of. In addition to that, of course, I had the mismatched pajama pants section mixed in with my pajama shorts and my assortment of shitty sweatpants, okay? All of a sudden, I started to look in the mirror and realize, you know what? This is not sexy. It's not cute, nor is it chic. I spend all of this money on my wardrobe, and I try to look my best when I go out and when I work out. So why am I skimping on this? My pajamas, they need a makeover. It's part of my wardrobe, and I need to treat it as such. That's when I came to two realizations. I need to get my act together and at least get a few nice sets of pajamas that I can lounge around in at night that aren't too skimpy. Now, I had a 14-year-old boy running around the house at the time with his friends over here constantly. And then, of course, I could sleep in them or just the top or whatever I was comfortable in. The second realization came when I said, you know, what if I want to walk the dog when it's raining or clean out the garage or paint? 
or help someone move or do yard work or whatever. That's how the house section of my wardrobe was born. That's what I show my clients who have similar clothing that needs to be demoted when I do closet cleanouts. You should have a section in your wardrobe that is for this very purpose. Clothes that you need to wear when you know you're getting dirty. However, there are just a few rules when you have clothes that fit in this category. Number one, you shouldn't have so much shit that it's overflowing into several drawers. You should have one drawer or one section in your closet for this purpose and this purpose only. And this does include shoes. You should have some shit sneakers, maybe a few pair to walk the dog in, clean out the garage, go get your kid from college, move them out, paint, what have you. All of my stuff is in one drawer. And then the shoes and my sneakers that I have worn so much from working out in them, they get demoted to the dog walking closet. I literally have one of Zach's North Face jackets. I think that he wore in middle school. It's warm. It's in great condition. And I wear that to walk schmutz when it's really cold. Please notice, please notice that I did not say Crocs in this scenario. Out of all the shoes in the world, these are not included. I repeat, they are not included. I don't care if you just wear them to walk the dog or in the yard. I don't care. They are a gateway drug. Okay. I'm sorry, not sorry. This is a non-negotiable. You start wearing them around the house, then you're like, oh, let me just run to the store. Let me just do this. I got to go drop something off. Then the next thing you know, you're out in fucking three hours with Crocs on. Girl, no, just no. Whatever you like to sleep in or not sleep in, of course, this is still part of your wardrobe. You should feel like you have 100% confidence in looking good and being comfortable. Now, Believe you me, I know this is not a fashion show, okay? I'm aware, but you should have really nice pajamas that are current and fit you correctly, not 10-year-old pajamas or some Christmas-themed pajama pants in May, okay? Not chic. And just a word to the wise, if y'all do the holiday dress-up greeting cards with matching outfits or matching pajamas, look, whatever your tradition is in your house, None my business. None my business. I'm just telling you, outside the month of December, it's not cute. Same goes for any, any and all and every holiday-themed clothing for any holiday, Valentine's Day, 4th of July, Halloween, especially if y'all have little kids, okay? I personally, I hate clothes like this. It's a huge pet peeve of mine, but you do get a free pass. You do get a free pass on the actual holiday, not two weeks before, not two weeks after the day of. If you want to be festive, I'm not here to holiday shame you, okay? I just beg you to keep it in season. That's all. I've seen way too many people take this for granted, and that is a fashion crime of epic proportions. Epic. <laughs> And this includes Disney shit too, okay? You want to wear some Disney t-shirts while you're at Disney? This was a problem with my last client. It's fine. You want to take a picture? All y'all have on matching Disney t-shirts? Great. When you're not at Disney, that is not applicable to your wardrobe. In addition, this also goes for any holiday-themed jewelry and slash or accessories, okay? I have a client. Love her. Love her. She has a strong novelty earring collection. And after I died inside a little bit, she explained to me that she only bust them out on said holiday. I did say that I could live with that. However, I then confronted her on where and when she was wearing her earrings. That's just say were soy sauce bottles or the ones that were shaped like piano keys. Then we had a fight to the death on that. Let's just say she won, okay? She did. She won. Not afraid to admit it. Now, I love a matching set, but it's not like a hard and fast rule for pajamas. You don't have to wear a matching set every single night. Just like your clothes during the day, not every day is going to be a home run. However, if what you have to choose from, it's nice, it's updated pieces that you can mix and match, you're good. If you have pajamas and robes that are like five to 10 years old, you can certainly donate them. 
in homeless shelters, this is the number one thing that they need. Pajamas, underwear, bras, socks, undergarments. That is a huge deal for shelters because things like that, they go so quickly. So please consider donating these items if you would like to get new pajamas, so forth, so on, and what have you. They also need bags too. So if you have purses and tote bags that are relatively inexpensive, they need those as well. Just like regular clothes. For pajamas, you can go really high end, low end, or middle of the road. I have a few sets that are high end, but mostly my pajamas are a mix of moderate to low end. I don't always wear a robe, but I do every now and then. I actually do wear a robe, but not every time. I have a robe for winter and I have one for summer and that's it. I really only have two, but if robes are your jam and if you love a robe, you should have three or four to choose from in different price points and donate them like every four to six years. They can last longer. Yes, they can, but you deserve something updated and new just like pajamas. So brands like J, PJ Salvage, Loop Chamont, Olivia Von Hall, Halle, not sure how to pronounce that. That's very high end, of course. La Perla, very high end. Lunia Yawn Pajamas, just found about them. They have very cute stuff. Only Hearts, Hesper Fox, Casabella, and Notori. Oh, and Barefoot Dreams, they're great too. So if you like a short set, you know, shorts, matching shorts, long pants and a long sleeve top, you know, like button down. If you like a nightgown or nothing, (laughs) It's great to have five or six nice sets. I mean, the matching sets I have are a mix of shorts and pants, but I really, honestly, I could use like 10 more and donate all my crap. Right now, today, I could donate everything because my shit is old or older. Definitely time for an upgrade for me. That is for sure. And if you like sweats like I do, which I think we all do, just upgrade them. All of the loungewear suggestions, they all sell sweats. And I need to seriously upgrade mine. I have a sweatpant collection, let's be honest. And some of them are nicer and some of them are designers, but most of them are not. I just need new ones so I can donate the rest. See, once you spend the time and the money on something like this, then you're good for like two years, three years. This isn't something you need to spend money on consistently. You can hold for a while once you've gotten a few new ones. Also... If you ask for these things for holidays, make sure you pick out the ones you want. Send your family and friends the link and the size and the color that you want. Y'all got to get real specific, okay? There's nothing worse than telling your mom you want pajamas and then you end up with some old lady shit, okay? No, um, no. People who do not shop that often need to be told when, where, and what to get. If you don't tell them, they don't know, and it's not their fault. I've heard way too many. I mean, I wish I had a nickel or dollar for every story I've heard. I'm using air quotes here. I want to take it back, but I don't want to hurt their feelings, unquote, stories. It's just a fashion crime. In this day and age, this day and age, to shop for a gift for someone without asking them what they want first. I'm sorry, it's just too easy to shop nowadays. You have to communicate so people know what you want. And if you don't, it's not their fault. You didn't specify what to get you. For me specifically, I have an ongoing Google Doc. I know that sounds bitchy. I know that sounds jappy. I know that sounds entitled and spoiled. But I'm just putting in the universe what I want and on Jonathan's computer what I want, okay? Like, I'm not even kidding. Nolan, he has made a Google Doc for me. And then we add to it all year. And then Jonathan, my husband, he gets to pick out what he wants to get me off the list. He knows not to stray from the list. He knows. I don't need him wasting time trying to figure out what's cool or in style for me. Do your family, partner, husband, girlfriend, boyfriend, do them a favor and hand it to them on a silver platter. That's what I do for Jonathan. And he does the same for me. I mean, are you serious right now? He tells me exactly what he wants. I get it. And then I, it's funny because I get it. And then he totally forgets what he tells me. And then he's surprised all over again. It's a win-win. And it never fails. It's a foolproof plan. Believe me, when someone gives you a gift, 
They want you to like it and to use it. And if you are giving a gift to someone else, this goes without saying, you give someone else the same courtesy. Great, you want clothes? Show me when and where and how to buy it or send me a link. Then you give the gift receipt or give them the receipt if the store does not offer a gift receipt. Most stores should always, always give a gift receipt. Number one rule in gift giving. I mean, that's a whole other episode, do's and don'ts of buying someone clothes or accessories. We will go into more depth later. In the meantime, write me, send me a DM, or email me at holly at fashioncrimespodcast.com and show me your new pajamas and your robes. I'll do the same. I want to see. Y'all, thanks for hanging in there with me this week. This was a special request, as you know. If you have something that you want to talk about, make sure you let me know. Tell me. Send me a DM. Send me snail mail. Send me an email. Call me. Whatever y'all want to do. Love you guys so much. And I just want you to know you are much appreciated. Please leave me a review on Apple Podcasts because all that does is push me up. Go to our YouTube channel. Sign up for our email list. Send me to someone you love care about or someone who needs fashion help i am your favorite holly the hostess with the mostest and as always your favorite personal stylist y'all have a fabulous fashionable week bye